everybody's gangster. Until they can't find their car keys. <laughs> Hi, my name is Remus. This is Hearts Paradox. Um, the address above is where my blog is. It has a lot more material than my YouTube channel does. Also, uh, if you listen to podcasts, check out The Vampire and the Buddha. Which is where you know, it's available wherever you get your favorite podcast. Where I team up with a colleague of mine, and we just discuss various you know mystical and paranormal subjects. Okay, so to the point of this video, I want to talk about dousing. Uh, successfully dousing requires a tool such as a fork stick or a pendulum to translate knowledge directly from the unconscious mind into the physical body. This takes advantage of what is called the idiomotor response. This essentially means that small muscle movements are allowed to be controlled without direction from the conscious mind. Usually this is done by an individual rather than a group effort, such as required for things such as uh, Ouija boards and table tipping. Traditional dowsing, which is sometimes called water witching, was done for the purpose of finding hidden resources under the ground. Most commonly water, but anything can be targeted. Dowsing can be used to locate oil or minerals or buried pipes or unmarked graves. Since this function of the mind is a function of the mind rather than some magnetic or electrical phenomena, the composition of the target doesn't matter. Like with the development of any other talent, practice is the key. Most old-time descriptions of the art speak of the use of a forked stick taken from a hazel tree or some other thin, flexible wood. One hand holds each of the two forks and the stem points out away from the practitioner. I myself have never tried this method, as I have had great success using a weighted pendulum instead. The pendulum can also be used as a general divination tool that can not only point it to a direction, but also answer simple questions of the yes or no variety. You can obtain a fancy purpose-made pendulum from a new age shop, but a machine nut tied to a piece of string will suffice. Hold the string with the weighted end hanging freely. You can use one hand or both at the same time. Try to hold it as still as you can until the weight stops swinging. Now you basically want to interrogate the pendulum to find out how it will work. Address it as if it had a spirit of its own and ask it how it will indicate a yes response. This step is important because pendulums behave differently for different people. So a yes answer could be swinging to and fro, it could be a side to side motion, it might be a clockwise or anti-clockwise circle. In the same way, find out what a no looks like. Now it has to indicate a particular direction, such as north, or to the front door. The size of the swing, or the, or the arc of the swing, can also indicate the strength of the confidence in the, of the response. It is also important to vary the length of the string as you find it fit. It tends to work best at a certain length, which varies from person to person. Once you understand your, penguin, your pendulum's language, it is time to get in some practice. Essentially, you have to find something that you don't know the location of. One way to accomplish this is to have a friend hide, a, hide or bury a small object within a delineated area, such as a yard or a small field, while you're not around. Then you go to that spot afterwards and see if you can find the object. It is important that you do this without having that same friend with you, because at the time they, you may pick up on their body language or their reactions, and this will might give you the location even if subconsciously. Another way to practice, which I sometimes do for fun, is to use the geocaching app to get yourself in the general area of a geocache, and then use the pendulum as a to narrow the search down and find it. Don't get discouraged if success is elusive. No archer hits the bullseye the first time she picks up a bow. Try different things. Try different states of mind. Try switching hands uh, 
Look for clues around you. Keep your mind open to the avenues of other avenues of information. Sometimes a blowing leaf or the path of a bird in flight can give you a direction. As you get better at this, you will notice that you can predict what the pendulum would do before it begins to move or change. This is because the information is coming to you from you, not from the pendulum. As you begin to master this, you will find over time that you don't need you don't actually need to have the pendulum with you at all, and you can find things without it. Always remember that magic comes from the magician, not from the tool. Alright? <laughs> Uh, as usual, thank you so much for watching, and I see you. <laughs>